Chrysler Corporation, throughout our history, we've been parent and guardian of automotive engineering. The real thing, not just the gimmicks and the chrome, but the real car. The ride and the drive, the power and safety, and the ultimate joy of owning an automobile. We've engineered always toward the car of ultimate silence, strength, and long life. This year, we've got it. Car makers bolted a light, flexible body to a heavy but still flexible frame. But we were looking around for ways to do things better, ways that were not necessarily traditional with cars. For example, we admired this kind of bridge. They build it when strength is a problem. When it's all finished, it actually amounts to one piece of metal with three-dimensional rigidity. And we admired some little things, too. We admired the egg. Engineers have always respected the egg as the ideal unit construction, nature's best combination of lightness and strength. We wanted to put wheels on it. Unitized bodies had been built, of course, but they all came equipped with some special problems. One of them, noise. Ordinarily, their unitized shells turned out to be steel drums. They focused noise, all kinds of noise, on the people inside. And the unitized bodybuilders never licked the ugly business of rust. When we commenced planning for the 60s, we needed more than the ordinary tools of the engineering trade. We had problems to solve. And the prize was the perfection we knew could be engineered in a unit body. We knew we could do it. We have a reputation. We've been there first and best more often than any other builder. And now we were pledged for the 60s never to shortchange a design for the sake of time. But something had been happening to time. We were making it happen. We built the Redstone. We built the Jupiter. And we built the mighty Jupiter C that put the first American satellites into orbit. But before the Redstones and Jupiters, we had fired hundreds of others that were never built. We fired them on electronic computers. We fired them with a roar of arithmetic that would have taken us a hundred years with pencil and paper. Before we built missiles, we knew them inside and out. And when we did build them, they worked. Now time was on our side. We could speed it up. We could build things a thousand ways and then pick the best. That was our private breakthrough. We built a body thousands of ways and we picked the best, a design far ahead of any other. It has what a car should have, silence, strength, endurance. And there are things it does not have. Our big idea starts as simply as this. Two pieces of metal can make noise. One can't. We wanted the one piece, 3D strength of the bridge we admired. In simple terms, this kind of bridge. We wanted a body that was a frame, a solid bridge of a car. And on our computers, we built and tried them by the hundreds. We invented a new plastic to use in model making, a plastic that behaves like scale model steel with 1 500th the strength, 500 times the flex. We imitated in miniature the structural designs we liked. We built cars and found out what they could do 
times 500. We made them one piece with plastic welding. And the welds, too, were 1 500th the strength of welded steel. And we tested them. We applied some scale model twists. We weighted down a front corner and measured minutely the effect on the body. Then we added more weight. Under these exacting conditions, we proved what the computers had told us to expect, a body twice as strong as before. So we went ahead with what we knew was a body that would meet all the demands of the 60s. One unit with a frame flowing into and becoming a part of the body, below and around and up and over. This is our unibody. To build it, we had to rebuild the plants we had, even build new ones. New operations designed from the ground up to build unibody. Designed with conveyors carrying sub-assembled parts to be joined. To be more than joined, to become one. To become unibody. A part, a part. A side, a side. From the left, from the right, come together with the floor pan and are locked in perfect alignment. The giant fixtures tolerate no inaccuracy. The alignment now is right. Unibody alignment that guarantees perfect fit of doors, fenders, hoods, trunk lids. Welded to be perfect now and for the life of the car. They're no longer merely assembled parts. They are one welded into one body that is stronger than the sum of its parts. Now is the time when we protect their built-in strength. Protected against what? We've stopped leaks. Chrysler Corporation is the first to apply a new liquid gasket, to apply it by automation. Then we heat it up and it expands once and for all to form the perfect leak-proof seal at each and every joint. And then we lick rust once and for all. It took a lot of inventiveness and a lot of new plant facilities to do it, but the result is worth every bit of it. First of all, we built giant tanks and conveyors to carry the bodies through them. In the tanks are the remarkable chemicals that clean and etch the metal so that it will never part company with the new protective coating we've invented. In the first six tanks, six separate dips and sprays reach every rust-vulnerable bit of metal. It's a process of etching and rinsing, not once, but several times. The result? A chemically sandpapered surface, ready to take hold of Chrysler Corporation's rust-preventing plastic coating. Now the seventh dip, the one that locks out rust. The plastic coating sheathes the surface. Under, into, over, around every one of the critical spots we used to call rust zones, protecting the body from rust for the life of the car. In our labs, we've tested samples of our plastic coating thousands of times and hundreds of ways, and we've tested the primers that other manufacturers use. Here's one test that says it briefly. A highly concentrated salt solution goes to work on a set of samples, our samples and other people's. Here again, we're turning time ahead, giving these samples 10 years of road life that's rougher than real conditions on the saltiest streets in the world. The good-looking sample in the middle, that's ours. Now, look at something else Unibody does not have. We've licked 
its shape. We licked it first in the mathematics of the computer. We confirmed what we had done in the lab and on the road. We built some electronic roads, the only ones of their kind in the world. We tested body structure, engine mountings, everything that could shake or be shaken. We shook the unibody for all it was worth. Electronically, we tuned it to the solid kind of quietness we wanted. Here's a simple test. That's sand. And this is a perfect imitation of driving on cobblestones. The sand, it stands still. Now the same test on another car. And again, the same imitation of driving over cobblestones. The sand walks right off this fender, and the ride and the quiet of this car cannot match unibodies. So in the 60s, we're done with the weakening effects of rattle, squeak, and shake, and with their annoyance. But that's not all. We're done with annoying road noise, too. We have new kinds of sound insulation, lots of it. Sound deadening felt pads and fiber blankets that hush the outside noises. And Unibody is quiet, limousine quiet, always. But even before you start the engine, you start discovering the wonders of Unibody. The crooked A post, the dog leg in the door pillar, is gone. There's a world of room for getting in and out. No shallow roof or short leg room. No thin seat cushions and awkward doorways. Instead, space. Above, below, in front, in back. Low, modern styling outside, far more room inside. And inside, with no separate frame to accommodate, the floor level provides for higher seats and more leg room than ever before. The first time you drive or ride in any of these cars, you get the happy surprise of realizing all by yourself that something new and remarkable has happened in the automobile business. You don't have to be told. It's not window dressing, but solid, comfortable, quiet reality. It doesn't need explanation. Our Proving Grounds drivers knew it with the first touch of the accelerator, and they kept rediscovering it with every quiet mile they drove. And most of their miles are far from quiet. They discovered that the incredible match that was engineered between unibody and torsion air is something no one can fail to recognize. The long, velvet stride of torsion air that floats our really quiet cars over any road. We rolled up 100,000. We rolled up another. And the answers were there even before the test cars came in for their final exams. Did they come in looking like some of these familiar 50,000-mile veterans? No, sir. Our cars came in proudly, strong, quiet. After 200,000 miles of highways and the Proving Ground special kinds of torment in every sort of climate, Unibody was unbeaten. The test cars were young, but they were victorious veterans. Among them, they had piled up a million miles. 200,000 for this one. Hundreds of it on wet and heavily salted roads. No sign of rust. So this was it. A body that, in the lifetime of the car, won't let an owner complain. And after 200,000 miles, what about vibration? What about shape? There isn't any. We tried the sand business again. Visual proof that unibody is still the same solid unit when it's 200,000 miles old. Rattles and squeaks? Well, we took our pulse. We tried hard with electronic stethoscopes to find noises the miles had not produced. Unibody wrote its own testimonials. Wrote them on the machinery in the lab. And that was that. What's the payoff? 
for most people, it starts with the first ride, the first drive. It starts quietly, and it goes on quietly for a long, long time. We've tried to describe to ourselves the feel of these cars. All of us have. The engineers, the drivers, and others whose interests are not technical at all. And what we say is nearly always the same. You have never been in a solid car before. You have never felt this kind of quiet independence from the road. It's easy to feel, and it's easy to sell.